The government has laid out economic policy measures for the new year. It centers on curbing inflation and boosting domestic consumption. It's seeking to achieve both by pumping in trillions of won to stabilize prices while offering various tax incentives to both companies and individuals. On today's GMS Focus, we dissect key economic policy directions for 2024 with Professor Young Jun Suk joining us now on the line. Good morning, Professor Young. Good morning. All right, let's take us uh, into the deep end of this pool. The government plans to inject 11 trillion won to bring down Korea's inflation rate to the 2% range in the first half of this year. Various discounts, tariff uh, uh, deductions will be provided for agricultural products, namely, while freezing public utility fees in the first half. Uh, Can you tell us more about the government's framework to tame prices in the new year? And, of course, I think the biggest question is, will they be effective? Well, I think they will be effective, but partially, so let me get into the details. Usually, higher government spending is associated with increasing prices and higher inflation, not less. Uh, But uh, let's look at the specific reason why we have this particular inflation at this uh, time. Uh, It's mostly supply problems. That is, uh, the uh, supply was reduced or restricted because of supply bottlenecks, domestic and foreign, uh, due to the uh, pandemic and due to the uh, Ukraine invasion. Uh, And then we also had uh, food supply shortages from unusual weather that we had both domestically and globally. Uh, So to the extent that spending is used to uh, try to increase the supply by greasing the wheels, that is reducing uh, fr- uh, frictions, which uh, worsen shortages, that should be helpful in reducing inflation. Uh, the, some of the example of this type of policies can include making imports of foreign foodstuff easier, uh, lowering the tariff rates, uh, and trying to uh, increase the domestic supply for goods which are uh, undergoing shortages. Uh, so uh, measures like reducing tariffs for imported foodstuff uh, the that yeah, should be very helpful. Uh, economists usually recommend free trade to reduce price volatility uh, and, uh, in general, reduce the price of food uh, because, well, domestic uh, domestic markets are usually small, uh, so they're more affected by volatility. Also, uh, because the area of a country is usually smaller than global. Uh, you have uh, more influence of the local weather. So if you sort of go global, uh, then you should have uh, less of that type of volatility or uh, vulnerability to uh, from the weather. Uh, Korea uh, also, uh, Korea still has high, relatively high tariff rates for imports and uh, or foodstuff. Uh, and that's to protect domestic farmers. Uh, Korea does have FTAs, and eventually the uh, most agricultural tariffs should go to zero, but it will take place between uh, 10 to 20 years, so Korean tariffs are still high. Uh, so these type of uh, temporary tariff reduction measures should have some effect. Um, so these type of measures which try to increase supply, uh, decrease uh, cost in supplying, uh, that should help. Uh, mm-hmm. Other policies uh, that have similar effect would be trying to reduce uh, taxes temporarily on raw material and intermediate goods. Uh, for example, uh, fuel for power generation, uh, that is included in the government plans as well. Also, the uh, 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 measures to try to increase the efficiency of distribution. Uh, That can be very helpful. Uh, Government plans to increase uh, the number of value stores, uh, which sells good at lower prices. Uh, That type of measures will probably help, uh, but uh, I think a larger uh, fundamental reform of distribution sector is probably uh, going to be needed at some point. So those supply-side policy should be helpful, Mm -hmm. Uh, but government measures also include demand-side measures, and what those are are uh, measures that uh, increases the demand for uh, these type of products. Uh, I think uh, these demand-side solutions may be more difficult to justify, and 
de- uh, demand side policies which try to increase demand for certain types of goods or reduce specific prices, that will not be very helpful. Uh, for example, uh, t- very harm, uh, especially harmful are measures which decrease the purchase price of specific goods under shortages, uh, which, for example, reducing taxes on gasoline or delaying the inevitable increase of prices on electricity, uh, that will uh, do more harm than good uh, because uh, you're, uh, you're, you have shortages of these goods. But uh, because you also try to get lower prices, that will actually increase the demand and increase the shortages. Uh, so... Uh, if you are going to have these type of demand side uh, policies where you try to increase demand, uh, giving non-specified assistance, that is uh, just giving them perhaps uh, income supports or uh, vouchers, ca- which can be used for any type of uh, goods rather than specific goods, I think that will be much more helpful because that will allow the household uh, to not uh, buy uh, cheaper uh food stuff or cheaper uh, goods, uh, which is not usually, they're cheaper because they're not in shortage. Mm-hmm. Uh, so supply side uh, policies will be very helpful. Uh, demand side policies, especially those demand side policies which try to fix certain prices or give assistance to certain uh, certain uh, goods, Uh, those are probably going to be less helpful and it may even worsen the problem. Mm. Uh, But also let's remember that Korean consumption is huge. It's 60% of GDP. That's about 1.3 quadrillion or 1,300 trillion won. And this plan is basically about 11 trillion won. So uh, Hmm. I hope it does have effect, but we shouldn't expect it to be too large. Uh, and I also want to discuss some of the tax breaks that are in the works uh, set forward by the government. Uh, tax cuts for companies and individuals are a key part in this year's economic policy, uh, I- ideally to boost investment and domestic spending. Some of these measures seem to include tax benefits for a company investing more in R&D, a greater financial support for small business owners. Tax cuts will also be offered for those who buy second homes in rural areas and those with greater amounts of credit card use compared to last year. Uh, can you walk us through some of these key tax cut measures? OK, let's start with the R&D first. Uh, there will be tax deduction for R&D investment. Uh, the uh, current uh, deduction rate will increase from uh, increase by 10 percentage points. So it'll be 35% for large companies and 60% for small companies. And uh, uh, ho- hopefully this uh, reduction in uh, this uh, tax reduction may result in uh, undoing some of the negative effects from reducing government's uh, R&D expenditure. Mm. Uh, but also we should note that Advanced countries like the United States, most of their assistance for R&D actually comes from uh, tax deductions and tax reductions, not direct assistance to R&D, not direct spending on Mm. R&D. So uh, the advantage of tax deduction over direct government funding is that it allows firms to make their own decisions on R&D projects uh, rather than taking it to the government and uh, seeing whether uh, government will accept this project or not. And then there's effectively uh, no ceiling on the uh, assistance uh, that's offered because, well, if you have direct government spending, then that that upper limit on that is how much government budgeted for spending on R&D. But if you have tax reductions, then if a firm decides to have a very high expenditure very high spending on R&D, well, uh, they get a tax reduction on that. Uh, so it's not limited by government's uh, budget uh, uh, plans. Mm. Uh, and uh, let's go to housing and real estate. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, measures to uh, uh, for those who buy second house and the countryside, rural areas, uh, the uh, current tax laws will be modified so that the second house will not count against the uh, buyer under Korea's somewhat punitive tax laws against owning multiple units of housing. Uh, 
and the measure is trying to uh, trying to invigorate the more abound uh, regional housing mm-hmm. markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this is probably a good idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, If the uh, buyers are uh, limited to buying only one house because of the punitive taxes, and if the housing values are uh, rising faster in metropolitan areas, then as a house buyer, you're buying uh, part of the reason why you're buying this house is for its investment value. Uh, You're trying to get maximize what you get after uh, uh, retirement, perhaps. And uh, so if you're only limited to buying one house, you're going to try to buy a house whose prices are rising the fastest, and that's going to be in the uh, Seoul or Sejong metropolitan areas. Uh, And this additional demand uh, will push up prices even further. Uh, But uh, And that partially explains why uh, housing markets outside those major areas perhaps uh, are going to be very lackluster uh, if, if people are going to buy just one house, it's going to be in these uh, rapidly uh, p- rising price uh, regions like Seoul. Uh, but if you uh, allow second house uh, people to buy a second house uh, without facing punitive taxes, uh, in uh, when you buy a house outside of these metropolitan areas, well, they may decide to buy a house for a uh, vacation home, or they may decide to buy a. Uh, a house outside the metropolitan area for them to live in while keeping the house that's in the metropolitan area for uh, income purposes like uh, renting the house out. Mm -hmm. So uh, you will probably have uh, more demand for housing outside the metropolitan areas, uh, but a lot of people think that this still will be a drawback because uh, the uh, rural area will uh, will have higher housing prices only in the so-called more desirable areas like mm-hmm. uh, those areas which are closer to the metropolitan areas mm-hmm. or where the, where you have uh, where the uh, area is a very nice vacation spot mm-hmm. uh, but I think that's a uh, feature not a bug uh, because uh, you don't really want to encourage a lot of housing in areas where people don't want to live mm. uh, so uh, you want to encourage more housing in the areas where people do want to live, uh, and the uh, price difference between uh, even the rural areas where uh, so areas where people want to live and area where there really is no demand, mm-hmm. uh, that's going to encourage more housing in those areas which are uh, people want to live in and discourage uh, construction in areas where people don't want to live in. So I think overall that would have a uh, better effect. Mm. Especially in the long term with ideally no empty houses, right? Because if you were to build or continuously develop housing in areas that are not fundamentally desirable, eventually when the population shrinks, I'm not quite sure if they're sustainable. Uh, Professor Young, uh, because we're always crunched on time, I wonder if we can skip on to our last question today. Uh, Some economists voice concern that the various tax cut measures go against government policies crafted to achieve Fiscal soundness, they point out that although government spending has been more suppressed for 2024 compared to past years, record low tax revenues continue to raise red flags for Korea's fiscal health. So what are your thoughts on that view? Okay, this is where textbook economics meets politics. Uh, Ideally, uh, we want government spending and deficit to remain stable on average over years, over our business cycle, rather than one year at a time. And that's because we want the uh, government spending to act as stabilizers for the economy rather than destabilizers. What we mean by stabilizer is that, well, let's say the gov- uh, economy is not doing very well. It's going to, uh, it's in a recession. Then we want government uh, spending to increase. That may increase the deficit, but it will help jumpstart the economy. Uh, while uh, if the economy is overheating, uh, then we want government spending to uh, uh, shrink uh, so that the uh, spending overall will shrink and hopefully uh, gov- uh, the economy will uh, stop overheating and uh, inflation uh, will not develop. Uh, so in some sense, during bad years, we want the uh, deficit and during good years, uh, we should use uh, reduce the government spending to have uh, positive uh, surpluses 
so that we'll have a balanced budget over a period of years, not just year by year. Uh, but the problem is, ever since about 2010, Korea's uh, government spending had been going up and deficits have been going up. Before 2010, we actually been doing fairly well. We kept uh, government spending under control and at least for consolidated government budget deficit, we really had a de- uh, budget deficit only during perhaps uh, extreme recessions like uh, Asian financial crisis and global financial crisis mm-hmm. uh, did we uh, see a major deficit uh, before 2010. But after 2010, uh, the uh, government spending had gone up and uh, it seems that it's go- going to be very difficult to shrink this uh spending, and uh, that's going to increase the deficit, and increasing the deficit uh, would mean increasing government debt, and that's going to uh, create a lot of problems in the future. Uh, So government is talking about year-to-year budget uh, constraint uh, to keep the uh, deficit reined in at uh, below 3% of GDP. Uh, That's I don't think that's a perfect idea. Uh, like I said, uh, if the year's uh, growth is expected to decline or be very, very low, then we actually want the government spending to increase even at the cost of higher deficits. Uh, but it, since about 2010, once the government spending goes up, it stays up. Uh, so this might be a second best compromise, uh, but still, uh, because uh, this year and next year growth is seem to be uh, slower than usual, there is at least uh, some uh, justification that there should be more government spending. Mm. And not to oversimplify, but I wonder if the political calendar has sometimes uh, to do with these policy frameworks. I mean, we do have the important general elections coming up. Could that have an effect? Yeah, uh, usually during general elections or presidential elections or regional elections, virtually any kind of major national elections, Mm. uh, spending goes up. Now, Mm. some countries deal with this by uh, trying to uh, have uh, elections only on certain years. So, for example, in the United States, you have elections every other year. But Korea, we seem to have elections all the time. Mm. Uh, We have uh, presidential elections every five years. Uh, We have... uh, National Assembly elections every four years, Mm. and then local elections, uh, the uh, timing on that is various. Mm. So there's virtually no time to catch breath. Mm. Uh, Once one election is over, there's another election coming up usually in about a year. Uh, So that may be one reason why spending keeps on going up. Thank you very much, Dr. Young, for your insights. We'll speak to you again next week. Have a safe day. Thank you. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.